Do you remember where we left off? And I asked you a question about, do you have a special stuffy that you hold on to when you're worried about something? And I'm curious, you know, we talked about worry when we um, did that section in our Bible booklets. And we talked about what God says about worry. But are there times when you worry about grown-ups? Do you ever worry about big things like what Ramon is worrying about, things in your family? And it's really normal to have those feelings. Well, here we go. Don't worry about the jack-o'-lantern. We'll get another pumpkin. It won't be as big. I know it won't be as big, but at least you'll have your jack-o'-lantern. Mrs. Quimby kissed Ramona goodnight. Nighty-night, said Ramona in a muffled voice. And as soon as her mother left, she hopped out of bed and pulled her old panda bear out from under the bed and tucked it under the covers in front of her for comfort. The bear must have been dusty because Ramona sneezed. Achoo! Kazoon tight, said Mr. Quimby, passing the door. We'll carve another jack-o'-lantern tomorrow, don't you worry. He wasn't angry with Ramona. Ramona snuggled down with her dusty bear. Didn't grown-ups think children worried about anything except jack-o'-lanterns? Didn't they know that children worried about grown-ups? That is a big question, isn't it? And that is the end of that chapter. And now we are on to chapter four, Ramona to the rescue. The Quimby's said very little at breakfast the next morning. Beezus was moody and silent. Mrs. Quimby, in her white uniform, was in a hurry to leave for work. Picky Picky resentfully ate a few bites of the puss putty. Mr. Quimby did not say, I told you he'd eat when he was hungry, but the whole family knew he was thinking it. He might as well have said it. Ramona wished her family would cheer up. When they had finished eating, she found herself alone with her father. Bring me an ashtray, please, said Mr. Quimby. That's a good girl. Reluctantly, Ramona brought the ashtray. What do you think reluctantly means? I think it means she did it, but she didn't want to do it. Reluctantly, Ramona brought the ashtray and with her face rigid with disapproval, watched her father light his after-breakfast cigarette. Why so solemn? he asked as he shook out the flame and the match. Is it true what Beza said? Ramona demanded. But what? said Mr. Quimby. Ramona had a feeling her father really did know what she meant. About smoking and your lungs turning black? she asked. Mr. Quimby blew a puff of smoke towards the ceiling. I expect to be one of those old men with a long gray beard who has his picture in the newspaper on his hundredth birthday and who tells reporters he owes his whole long life just to cigarettes. Daddy, it's not funny. You're just being silly again. Her father took a deep breath and blew three more smoke rings across the table. That was not very nice, thought Ramona. And on the way to school, Ramona cut across the lawn for the pleasure of leaving footprints in the dew and then did not even bother to look back to see where she had walked. Instead of running or skipping, she just trudged along. Nothing was much fun anymore now that her family was quarreling. And then was silent at breakfast and her father's lungs were turning black and everything. Even though Mrs. Rogers announced, today our second grade is going to have fun learning, as she wrote the date on the blackboard, school turned out to be dreary because the class was having review again. Review meant boredom for some, like Ramona, because they had to repeat what they already knew. And for others, like Davy, because they had to try again what they couldn't even do in the first place. Review was the worst part of school. Ramona passed the morning looking through her workbook for words with double O's like book and cook. 
She carefully drew eyebrows over the O's and dots within to make her O's look like cross-eyed, like this. Can you guys go cross-eyed? Then she drew mouths with the ends turned down under the eyes. And when she finished, she had a cross-looking workbook that matched her feelings. She was in no hurry to leave the building at recess. And when she did, Davy yelled, Look out! Here comes Ramona! And began to run. So, of course, Ramona had to chase them around and around the playground until it was time to go inside again. Running until she was hot and panting made Ramona feel so much better. And she was filled with a sudden determination. Her father's lungs were not going to turn black. She wouldn't let them. Ramona made up her mind right then and there in the middle of arithmetic. That means math. That she was going to save her father's life. That afternoon after school, Ramona gathered up all her crayons and papers from the kitchen table. She took them to her room and she shut the door. She got down on her hands and knees and went to work on the bedroom floor, printing a sign in great big letters. Unfortunately, she did not plan ahead and soon reached the edge of her paper before she was done her word. I think that's happened to all of us, right? She could not find the scotch tape to fasten two pieces of paper together, so she continued to write underneath. And when she was finished, her sign said... What did that say? Nosmo King. Is that what it says? <laughs> it would do. Ramona found a pin and fastened her sign to the living room curtains where her father could not miss it. And then she waited, frightened by her daring. Mr. Quimby, although he must have seen the sign, said nothing until after dinner when he had finished his pumpkin pie. He asked for an ashtray and then he said, Say, who is this Mr. King? What, Mr. King? asked Ramona, walking right into his trap. Nosmo King, answered her father without cracking a smile. Urgh, angry, Ramona tore down her sign, crumpled it up, and threw it into the fireplace, and stalked off to the room, resolving to do better next time. And the next day, after school, Ramona found her scotch tape and disappeared into her room to continue with her plan to save her father's life. And we'll stop there. <laughs>